Hey friends, good morning and happy new year. I'm so excited that 2020 is done. It's done, it's gone. It's not that the pandemic is suddenly not here in 2021 and yet it's a fresh slate. We can begin again, at least emotionally. And you know, that's half the battle. So this is the new year's edition of updates and spoilers. And I am so excited. I'm always excited. Well, often. But anyway, I'm so excited to share with you my plans for the New Year's. Um, this isn't really about resolutions. This is about firm and solid plans. So uh, I know that I've gotten some comments asking and hoping and praying that I will start writing Loki again in 2021. And yes, writing Loki is on the slate. Uh, the second week of February. And while I don't often have such a clearly defined schedule when it comes to my writing, um, that's what 2021 is bringing for me. It's the 2021 fairy, and it has many things to offer in its gift. So I'm pretty excited. Um, and I'm excited partly because I took what ended up being a year and what's really going to end up being 13 months off from writing Loki of Midgard and that, that trilogy because I was, well, I could use more words, but it was essentially writer's block. I had to write some difficult stuff. I had to write some tough scenes and I couldn't find it in myself to do it. And so I went and thought, well, you know, I'll just start a little short story about sort of emotional catharsis and not being able to avoid the hard scenes. And I think that by the time February 1st rolls around, in the 13 months I've been writing on this little short story, this little drabble in my head, um, I will have written half a million words. Most of them are posted on my favorite archive, AO3.org. And um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, there's lots of catharsis. Knowing me, there's lots of other things as well. Uh, that little drabble in my head, it was a short story, uh, is called Debts of Honor, in case you're curious, you want to go check it out. And as it turns out, Debts of Honor is written in the same universe in my head as Loki of Midgard. It's just written about 17 years earlier. Um, so there will be eventual down the road crossovers, but I get ahead of myself. So I am going to spend the rest of January continuing to work on Debts of Honor. And then, as much as it pains me, I'm going to put it aside. As of February 1st, I'm putting aside Debts of Honor briefly. I'll be coming back to it, I swear. Um, and in February, I will be finishing The Meddler. Pausing for applause. So... February is slated to finish The Meddler. I think this is possible. And I'm actually going to take the first week of February off as a vacation and reread Loki of Midgard, um, the final published version, to kind of get my head back in the game. And then reread The Crown Prince. And then reread The Meddler. I don't imagine it'll take me a whole week to do it, but it is a vacation. And then in the second week of February, I am going to begin and I am taking the three weeks that remain in February in the first week of March to finish the meddler. And then I'll be taking the rest of my sabbatical because what I am describing here, friends, is the beginning of my sabbatical, which was going to be big and involved and possibly include yours truly studying at Oxford, but there's a pandemic. So that's not happening. Uh, but Instead, I'm going to be taking three months off from my job to write for you. You're welcome. So I'm going to finish The Meddler, and then I'm going to move on, and I'm going to spend the next two months, the last two months of my sabbatical, uh, editing The Crown Prince and getting it ready for my beta readers to look at. I, <laughs> I by no means... Imagine that this is 
the last edit, but it is, in my mind at least, the big one. Um, it's the demarvelization of the story. It's taking it out of fanfic and creating, making it into original fic, which means that I'll be adding and twisting and contorting and adding. Did I say adding? I should say it twice. I should say it three times. Adding, because there will be a lot of additions. Um, to make it just as standalone as Loki of Midgard became. So uh, the bulk of that process will happen before my team of beta readers sets their eyes on it. And each one has kind of a different focus and capacity and um, love in the world. And you know, some of them are grammar Nazis and some of them are plot hounds. Um, and so between them all, um, they're a pretty fantastic team of my dedicated friends and readers who are going to make sure that I have not shot myself in the foot. Uh, and then I'm going to take several months and take their advice and do lots of rewrites and bless them. They'll read it several times because they are good people with some time on their hands or some of them, maybe not. Um, <laughs> no one will read it quite as much as my husband, however. But you know, that's what he enjoys. So that's gonna happen on my sabbatical. And I'm really hoping that, let's see, February, March, April, those are three months of my sabbatical. I'm really hoping that by the last day in April, I will have a set of documents that I can then give access to my beta readers. So if you're watching, that means you. Um, and then, Come May, I may need to take a deep breath, uh, but after the deep breath, I will begin again on Debts of Honor. And so I'm very excited about this. Um, you know, there was a time in my life when I was so worried that maybe I only really had one good novel in me. And I was so worried that I would never be able to think outside the box enough to do sufficient world building and that I would never be able to create my own characters <laughs> and that the thing that pained me the most was that I would never ever write brilliant, inspiring, if you will, enlightenment fiction that helped people's lives. So, I'm happy to say that I've got all those boxes checked. Um, and so that means that I can continue on knowing that I'm already a success, which is a huge consolation to me in the dark moments because I'm not always this excited. Uh, sometimes I'm very sad. So, uh, this is exciting to me. I'm thrilled about this. So that is kind of the writing update. There hasn't been writing on Loki yet, but it's coming, friends. It's coming. Um, and then the other side of my update, which I'm also very excited about, is that uh, my husband made a couple of fascinating suggestions about my Patreon, um, which is, you know, small but steady over there in the corner. And I have this tendency, you see, of writing ahead. And, you know, sometimes I know what's going to happen. And it's always subject to change because by the time I get there, eh, life may be quite different for my characters. But for the most part, that's generally the way it goes with perhaps very minor continuity tweaks. And so, for instance, I started writing Debts of Honor in January of 2020. And, uh, you know, I wrote some of the initial chapters and then I wrote uh, some chapters that were only posted because I only was able to write up to them in December. And I wrote some chapters that were posted in August and I wrote some chapters in January, you understand, um, that were posted in September. I write ahead and then I play catch up. And then sometimes I write ahead again and then I play catch up. Um, and so I still have bits that are forward, more forward in the story, in Debts of Honor, that I've written ahead. And 
this past week, I've been writing ahead again. It just, the inspiration strikes when it strikes. Um, and so my husband, my dear husband, who, as you all know, is my primary beta reader, um, has recommended that I start posting these odd little bits that happen in the distant future on Patreon for my patrons. Um, they would be massive spoilers. They would only be of interest to the people who read that particular story, perhaps. Um, but I'm going to start doing that. So my lowest tier is a dollar. If you have a dollar in a dream, you can go and have access to meh, whatever spoiler material I put up there. Um, in the past, the spoilers have mostly been as I demarvelize Loki of Midgard and start playing with characters and adding characters and changing things up. And so there will still be Loki spoilers on there. And there will begin to be Debts of Honor spoilers on there. Um, and there may even be spoilers for the third trilogy, which is, yes, in the same universe, which is about, get this, a space pirate librarian. No, she's awesome. She's totally awesome. Uh, and I think her trilogy is going to be called Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know. Because while it was said about Lord Byron from Carol Lamb, thank you so much, Carol Lamb, uh, it applies to Scheherazade too. So uh, we are going to see um, perhaps a cameo um, from Hera in Debts of Honor and perhaps a cameo of Hera in Loki of Midgard. And there is going to be um, a tiny sliver of crossover between what Debts of Honor will become when I take it out of the Wizarding World and Loki of Midgard when the meddler comes out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You cannot imagine how excited I am about this. And so the very first written ahead spoiler that I'm going to be putting on Patreon this afternoon is going to be that little snip of crossover between Debts of Omner featuring the Queen of Avalon um, and Loki of Midgard. And I'll give you a hint. It's always been a question on my mind. Uh, sometimes it's come with a lot of anxiety and then I've had to pray about it and then realize, no, I don't, I don't have to freak out about this. It's all gonna flow. My muse is gonna tell me what to do. So it's always been a question to me when it comes to some of the really big name characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that are not main characters in Loki, but they're really big name characters like Captain America and the Winter Soldier and Iron Man. What the hell am I going to do? What am I going to do when I demarvelize them? And bit by bit, the answers have been coming to me, and I won't spoil them here, but bit by bit, the answers have been coming to me. And the difficulty with Iron Man, whom I love, and who was the first Marvel Cinematic Universe character that I ever wrote fan fiction for, and that was way back. Um, I'd always understood the persona of Iron Man, at least the modern incarnation of him, to be like one part Elon Musk, whom I respect, who might be a little kooky sometimes, and who definitely needs to have more sleep and more sandwiches, but whom I respect, and one part, wait for it, Donald Trump who is, shall we say, a divisive figure at this point in at least U.S. history. And unless you live under a rock, he's a divisive figure, figure in the world. And I don't think I'm going to be spoiling my own political leanings when I say that while I respect Elon Musk, I do not actually respect Donald Trump. So... Having said that, 
I'm not sure I want a one-to-one -one replacement for Iron Man, but there has to be something because, you know, there's this big, beautiful scene where Iron Man comes storming through the gate and, you know, has all kinds of crazy threats. And, you know, I've been worrying about this scene because I haven't wanted to get rid of it. It's a beautiful scene. It's lovely. I know, I know, in the editing process, we have to kill all of our babies. But don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. So I've been worrying about that. And then I thought, well, okay, so if I put it in the same universe as my story of the space pirate, and I put it in the same universe as my story, Debts of Honor, um, then that opens up possibilities because Iron Man comes in the day that Loki of Midgard announces his presence to the world as practitioner of mischief, source of chaos, and sorcerer. And I thought to myself, well, if he has, if you will, shattered into tiny irreparable pieces the statute of secrecy, then it's possible other people might come calling for him too. And so that's what I wrote. And you'll see that. Now, are we going to lose all the joy and the fabulousness and the crazy of Iron Man? Probably not, but I haven't rewritten all of that yet. Um, if you trust me, then trust me. If you don't trust me, I'm not sure why you're watching this video. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to be putting out on Patreon little spoilers like that roughly twice a week when I've got them to drop. And when I don't, I won't. But they may show up on Patreon anywhere from weeks to months to years before people who are not my patrons get to see them. So if a dollar a month is worth it for you, rock on. If it's not and you're cool and you can wait, awesome. No worries. So that is this episode of updates and spoilers. And as I continue on and during my sabbatical, I hope to make these videos a little bit more often to let you guys know where I am in this process and have just a little bit of accountability. And also um, to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions in the comments of Loki of Midgard, the Crown Prince, the Meddler, um, and even Debts of Honor. And if you want, more information, I can answer your questions right here in updates and spoilers. So I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of my current patrons. Here's they, here they are. Hello, thank you patrons. You're super awesome. I put you up near the Hogwarts castle in the mural. That's what that is up there. Thank you so much. And if you would like to become a patron because, oh yes, oh yes, you can. You can check me out on patreon.com slash Sarah Liz, S-A-R-E-L-I-Z. And if you want to know more about other things that I do and other projects that I'm working on, you can check out my website at sarahliz.com, S-A-R-E-L-I-Z.com. That's it for this Updates and Spoilers. Thank you so much for checking in, and I will see you just a little bit later in 2021. Bye.